welcome back. We had folks traveling. Glad you're safely home, and we prayed for God to, to bless that way, and we received the answer to that prayer. We're grateful for that. This morning as we enter into worship today, it is Pentecost Sunday, and it may surprise you that I'm not preaching exactly a Pentecost message, but we're doing it right every Sunday as a Holy Spirit message and discussing things of, of that nature, so yeah. let's stand and worship God together this morning.
uh, lasting effects of this. It may take a little while to get completely past all that if you know anything about brain injuries, but uh, all things considered, God has done a great work in this young man's life, and we're so thankful and rejoice with the Powell family and, and uh, thankful to see God do, do the remarkable things he'd done for that young man because seven weeks ago right now, they weren't sure he was going to live, and uh, he's really, really doing well, and uh, so we're thankful to God for that. So uh, we'll give you a quick uh, kind of a testimony. Well, not kind of a testimony, a testimony. Talked to my brother the first time a little bit this week. He's physically doing really, really well. He's gotten some things that he's, that's been chronic issues. He's gotten some relief from those things. Uh, just continued prayers for him. God to bless him. And there's, you know, of course, the uh, situation there that I'll leave unspoken for this point. But uh, just God needs to do a work in, in, uh, in, in the circumstance. So other needs or anything else to share with us today? Debbie? Remember Kim, she's got MS, and she's, she's getting ready to go through the procedure to help her with that. Anybody else, anything else today? All right, let's stand together if you would and you're able. Let's pray. If you'd like to be prayed for, special, and anointed with oil, pray the prayer of faith over you. I'd be honored to do that today. You make your way down while we're praying over our list today and over the needs of our world. Holy Spirit, this morning we're grateful for your help and your strength in our lives each and every day and for your presence there to guide us, help us, and direct us. And we pray your blessing today, Lord God, over this church and church family. You know us and our needs and uh, the people that aren't with us this morning, why they're not here, and, and Father, that you'll bless them, be with them. If they're sick, heal them. If they're, if they're having to work, God, bless them in their work and, and just supply the need there according to your, your blessings you have for them. Today, we pray your blessing over James and Tammy for healing and restoration. Bless Dorothy. If this trouble and pain with her teeth would be gone. Touch and bless Debbie that she'll never have another seizure. Bless Lori for healing in her body. Lord, I bless and lift up Dan and Pam today for healing and restoration for them. Bless Donna Edwards, such Tanya. Bless Joan for your, your blessing that you have for her in her life today. Bless Brittany and, and uh, her baby. Bless Craig and Claude and Loretta Lee. And I speak healing and deliverance over her body this morning that those issues with her legs would be gone, her eyes would be whole and well. And then, Lord, she'd have a testimony one more time of your goodness, grace, and mercy. Bless little Briggs and Father God, and we pray for the miracle for this baby and her family. Bless Hazley and Hexley, that these little girls would know your touch and their families would know a miracle today. Thank you that Cade's doing well, I believe, for completion and for the miracle of God to be complete in his body and life. Thank you that Michael is feeling better and doing good, but I believe for complete power of your Holy Spirit moving his body and life today. Bless Ralph, and Lord, we speak over Sue today, comfort, peace, and strength. Bless Jim and Tammy's daughter and grandchildren, Dee and Brandy and Robert's unspoken needs today. And Father, we speak blessings over Kim, that you would bless her, and God, I believe for the miracle healing that she needs in her body, that she wouldn't need anything done, but Lord, we trust you today to bless her and touch her, to have your way in her life. God, I speak blessing over our, our president, our Congress, our, our Pentagon, those that are, that are serving the nation and the military around the world, and I ask you to bless our governor, local officials here, and God, speak your will and way over us, in us, through us, and for us. We honor you today. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. And ask you to touch us and bless us in our time we spend together this morning. In Jesus' name, everyone said.
of every day. And we speak the name of Jesus over our lives, over our families, over our country. We're speaking power. We're speaking victory. We're speaking a name like no other day. I just want to speak the name of Jesus.
Glorify his name where you are when you're watching this DVD. Let the name of Jesus come through your lips this morning. If you're needing a touch in your body this morning, speak the name of Jesus, the great physician. If you need a touch this morning in your mind today, if you're struggling, speak the name of Jesus, the one that knows you intimately and directly. Speak the name of Jesus this morning over your family, over children and grandchildren and loved ones that you have today that don't know Jesus and are struggling in some way. Speak the name of Jesus this morning in power and victory knowing that he is the answer no matter what the question today. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you speak today into our lives, into our hearts, into our homes, our families, God. Let your glory fall this morning in every place. That you're welcome today, Father God. Let us be used of you. Let your name be glorified in this place today, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, that you love us. Thank you, Jesus, that you care. Thank you, Jesus, that the that the the, 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 the name of Jesus is available to me to call on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the great name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and as I begin to think about what we're going to discuss today, it's Pentecost Sunday, and I certainly have that in my mind and my heart, but as far as a regular Pentecost message from Acts chapter 2 and beyond, I, I just couldn't get there this week, and as I begin to pray and think about exactly where God wants us to go this morning, I am 100% certain that the word that I'm going to share with you today from Romans chapter 12 is absolutely what God has set apart for you this morning, for those that are with us in person, watching online, or watching this later at some point by DVD or what have you. This is a word that I know and believe God has given me today that I think it has the potential, always, all of them have the potential, to make a difference in our hearts and lives. But as we think today about transformation, there is no transformation without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to work, move, and do what the Holy Spirit does or there is absolutely no possibility of transformation. And we're talking about just the experience of being becoming a Christian, 
And certainly, if you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and have experienced that gift from God, then, then certainly you understand even more. I think you understand even more. Not better than anybody or more than whatever. It's just a question of the work and the move of the Holy Spirit being available to you and I in the way the Holy Spirit works and operates. Now, as we think about this today, and we think about Pentecost and all those kind of things, and certainly that's important and wonderful and a great blessing from God that he gave us. It's a promise of the Father. Jesus called it. And we experience that when we, when we ask Jesus to fill us with the Holy Spirit, and he does. And we live in that, should live in that every single day, and I hope that you do. But beyond that, I want you to think more about your daily life, walking in, walking in with Christ, living for Jesus, and doing what you do or don't do as a Christian and living your life. Every single day, you need the Holy Spirit working in your life. Whether you're Pentecostal or not, whether you're Spirit-filled or not, as we call it, when you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. He, he, he comes in, he becomes a part of your life, and he helps you. You can read through John 14, 15, and 16. If you want to go back, you can watch the last several Sunday school lessons that are available online. They're available on our YouTube channel. You can see them there and get more from that. And we still got a couple weeks to go on, what, what, on dealing with the Holy Spirit and you and our Sunday school lessons. But, but church, when we are living for Christ, we are living for Christ wherever we are, whatever we're doing. The transformation is not just inside these walls. The transformation is at your house. The tra transformations at your job. The transformations at school for the school age kids. The transformation is wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're a Christian. And with your behavior, your conduct, your language, your everything should reflect that. Now, I don't have to ask the question because every hand would go up. How many of us know somebody that's probably in church this morning, but when you see them out somewhere or whatever, their language is not churchy. Their conduct is not okay with the word. I'm talking about the word of God, not my judgment. Not your judgment, I'm talking about what the Word of God says, how a person's supposed to live. What I want to challenge you to, and what I encourage you to continue in, because I think we've got a pretty good group of people here that I, that I have the privilege of pastoring, that we will be transformed and continue in that transformation day in and day out. Because last time I checked, none of us are perfect. What is transformation? Transformation is going from this condition or this state into the next. And the good news is that God has for us in our lives every stage and every step of life blessings and encouragements and, and another ladder step and another ladder step or rung, excuse me, rung, ladders or rungs, another step or another rung over and over and over again until we stand before him, until we enjoy his presence forever. And until that time, he has things for you and I every single day that are a part of our lives and a part of our family and a part of who we are in Christ. And if we will find ourselves in that place of transformation, we will never get bored. Let me say that again because I've heard people, well, Christianity's boring. Well, you ain't doing it right. There's nothing boring about this. It's exciting. It's amazing. If you have a prayer life, if you read God's Word, and you do anything at all in your life that would reflect Jesus Christ, there is nothing boring about that whatsoever because this is a good life. And if somebody is bored by their Christianity, they need to get saved again because you, you shouldn't be bored by living for Jesus. You, you, you can still have a good time. You can still have fun. It's just not the, it's not the good time the world sees, the good, time, the good time the world's trying to experience. The world thinks you've got to be drunk to have fun or stoned or high or some other condition to have a good time. Now, I'll tell you the truth. Now, you know my history. You know my past. When I was, when I was a drunk, I thought I was having fun. But I look back on the times where I didn't drink, but I still went and hung out with those friends. I had a much better time. I enjoyed myself so much more because I didn't feel like I felt a lot of times in the, in the moment. I sure didn't feel like I felt in the morning. And that's, that's not a great feeling if you've ever experienced it. And I, I know a lot of people, I was one of them, that I'd wake up the next day and I'm like, oh, I'm never doing that again. Oh. Some of y'all stayed up last night watching, well, we stayed up last night watching Razorbacks win a baseball game at Oklahoma State. Go Hogs, and we, we enjoyed that. And, and, but, it, you know, this morning when, the, when it was time to get up, it was kind of like, oh, Hogs, no, I don't want to. And uh, they play at 6 tonight, which we'll have to see it after church, but, uh, so I won't be up as late tonight, I don't think. Of course, last night's game shouldn't have went that long, but it got kind of out of hand. When you score 20 runs and the other, score, the other team scores 10 runs, that football scores don't get that high sometimes, so baseball is unusual, but it was quite a game. Anyway, but, but I'm just telling you, we, we think 
because this is the world's way of doing things. What, what they tell us is it's fun to do this. Fun to, when you watch, a, when we watch a, beer, a beer commercial on television, you're watching a game or watching something, and a beer commercial comes on TV, what do you see? Pretty people, cool people. Oh, we're so cool, we're doing this, we're doing that. You don't see the person who's blowed his rent at the liquor store. You don't see the person that can't afford groceries for his kids because he has to have that bottle. You don't see the person that is in, in liver failure because he has drank himself to death. They don't show you those people. They show you the cool people, the, the awesome, the, the, what, what's supposed to be the cool people. I remember years ago, there was a um, magazine cover. It was Christy Brinkley. Remember Christy Brinkley? Very beautiful young lady. And still beautiful as, a, as at the age she is now, which is my age, which is still young. <coughs> Keep telling myself that. But there was a, it was like one of these magazines, like I don't know what it was. I don't even remember the, which one it was. But it had a little tagline on it. It had her picture, just beautiful little face and her, everything there. And it said, what does Christy Brinkley need? Absolutely nothing. Turns out that that picture, to be enhanced and to take off lines and to go through and, and, and make that picture look that good, it cost, digital, digitally cost them like $4,000. So what Christy Brinkley needed was $4,000 to look that good, and that wasn't even her looking that good, that was her picture looking that good. So, you know, we get this idea from society that this is what the cool looks like, this is what the pretty people look like, this is how you're supposed to dress, how you're supposed to act, how you're supposed to function. When I was youth pastor, about that time, they may have had them for a long time, but about that time, there were two things that were cool for youth pastors. Dockers. Levi's cotton dockers. Had to have the dockers. You couldn't, no, not khaki pants. No, no. It there wasn't the Walmart Wrangler pants that you get that looked like that. It had to be Levi's cotton dockers. If you didn't have the little dockers tag across the back of that belt deal, I think it's where it was, you wasn't a cool youth pastor. The other thing was Doc Martin boots. Remember the Doc Martin boots? Clod hopping boots that laced up and they come up to about the middle, you know, above your ankle. Clod hopper boots. Now you could go to Walmart and get clod hopper boots, but if you didn't have the little Doc Martin tag along the, it was along the seam right here where your laces are, then you weren't the cool youth pastor. So I was a cool youth pastor. And also, don't remember, don't, don't, you may remember, I, they still have stores. I don't know, if, I've never seen a soul in one of them. Tommy Hilfiger, red, white, and blue. And I had a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. And I was, I was a cool youth pastor. I really was, and that's at least in my own opinion. Um, and don't ask any of the youth that I had it's in my youth groups. Don't ask my wife. But I thought I was cool. And, um, but I, had, I, I, I fit the bill. Well, that's the world saying this is what you're supposed to look like. Sometimes it's even the church saying this is what you're supposed to look like. But what I'm supposed to look like is more, has, more, has more of an impact for my heart than anything else that I'm going to put on my body. I need to make my mind up that what, I, what I'm like on the inside will be reflected by the outside of my life because you have the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of God working in your life. But in Romans chapter 12, the first two verses is where we're going to begin, and I'm going to try to move quickly here because I've got a lot to do, and I may get two weeks out of this. We'll see. But you know the passage. You've heard this before. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable, uh, I'm sorry, acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, speak to me today and give me the word that you have for this audience right now. You know who are listening right now. Those that may listen years from now through, through our technology, and we ask your blessing, God, over my heart and mind as I speak this word and over hearts and minds to receive it. Lord, that most of all it gets through to our heart and we find what we need to find in living our lives for you each and every day. And honor you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. So the Holy Spirit is there to help us. And, and John, in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus spent those three chapters from John's gospel telling us this is what the Holy Spirit's there for. The Holy Spirit's there to be your comforter, also known as helper. Those are interchangeable. He is there to be your guide, your teacher, and your help. All these things we've talked about over the course of our Sunday school lessons we've been doing for a number of weeks. He's there to convict and convince, and that's powerful and helpful there. He's there to guide, he's there to reveal and help us worship. We talked about that this morning in Sunday school. See, what we've got to get across to our own hearts and minds and convince ourselves of is that we need the Holy Spirit in order to be transformed day in and day out. 
None of us are perfect. None of us have all the answers. None of us have everything accomplished that we need to accomplish in Christ. So therefore, we need help. The Holy Spirit is our help. He indwells us. He lives in us. He knows where we are, what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're going to do. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows everything there is to know. And as we trust him to guide us, direct us, help us, comfort us, and lead us along our way, there are some things that transpire in our lives that will make us better, will make us stronger, make us more aware of the things going on around us, will help us in every way possible. In Romans chapter 12, as I was, as I was just trying to get my mind around what we're going to share this week and probably possibly next week, I, I just got to that place as I'm sitting there praying and thinking about it, and the Holy Spirit's just kind of saying, this is it. This is what you're looking for. Because like several passages of Scripture that exist, and you think about this, there are, there are several chapters in the Bible that really speak to our lives. I think about 23rd Psalm. Now, that's a funeral psalm to a lot of people. But as you know, and I've shared with you before and preached it a little, a little while back, the 23rd Psalm, is that's daily. That's every day of my life. I, I don't have to want because I have him. He walks with me in, in, the, in the, you know, the green pastures and beside the still waters through the valley of the shadow of death and surely goodness and mercy, all that, that's mine. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. Love is patient, love is kind, praise God. That, I mean, absolutely. And it's that agape, wonderful experience we have only through God that's possible. Um, and there's, there's several others you can think of that, are really, that really speak to this is who we should be in Christ. Well, what we're going to see through, through Romans chapter 12 is exactly that. Because Romans chapter 12, by itself, let's just imagine, if you will, if you'll just indulge me here for a minute, thank you for that, that, that you have only one piece of Scripture that you can have to know who Jesus is. Just one. You heard about Jesus, and now how do I live for him? Romans chapter 12 would, would get you through. If you had Romans chapter 12, and that's all the Bible you ever had, I'm going to show you this morning and probably next week that you have everything you need to have. It starts with the transformation. We are, we are transformed. And remember, watch what he says here. That, that, that I'm, I want to pull it back up here and look at it again because you're talking about a, a word here that, that we be transformed. Verse number two, let me pull it back up and put it back on the screen here for you. Verse number two, do not be conformed, but be transformed. That's ongoing. That's present tense. Today I need to be transformed. Tomorrow I need to be transformed. And my mind needs to be renewed day in and day out. How many of us know with the pressures of this world and the junk that's going on all around us that we need to have that new mind every single day? Renew our mind. Renew my body. Renew my strength. All of that renewal. God's Word gives us so much about renewal and too much of the time we're going around like we're beat, beat down and beat, beat half to death and we're burnt out and, and have all kinds of issues that that we shouldn't have to have as believers in Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm given the opportunity to live in victory. I said opportunity to live in victory every day. But am I living my victory? Am I experiencing that victory? We talked about that in the past, and we, we'll continue to talk about it down, down the line. But to get us to that place where we can look at the rest of chapter 12, I want to take you back to chapter 8 in Romans. Because Romans chapter 8, 12 through 17, gives us some direction here and kind of gives us a little spark, if you will, of where we're heading and how we're getting there. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. <clears throat> if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Now, let's, let's stay right here just for a second. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Sons and daughters, if you will. And that, you, you understand that the Word of God, that's clear to, to everybody. But, uh, you know, it's for everybody. But, but as we are led by the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit is to be in a place where God can use you, bless you, direct you, correct you. And we don't always like that. The Bible talks about the Lord chastises them who he loves. We don't want to be chastised. We don't want to be punished. We don't want to deal with that. This morning at our house, which almost every day happens at some point, the biggest one, she was, she, they were fighting over toys, and I want that toy, and she had that toy, and they got that toy from here, and it just nobody, we didn't have any clear answer. So in order to solve the problem, Nana just took the toys, put them away. Well, this one wanted them back, and that one wanted them, and the one that, that she took them away from flopped on the couch and squalled and bawled and screamed and shouted like the world was coming to an end. You ever been there spiritually? God, why are you doing this to me? I found fair. So the way I handle that when we have our little spells like that, I take them to their room, leave them in their room until they stop the nonsense. 
until you stop that. And then we talk about why we shouldn't be acting the way we're acting. And we had that discussion. We, had, we went through all of that. But, but there are those times where I don't understand what God's doing. I don't know why God's doing that. I don't know why, why it seems like, you know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Well, I'd rather have the give, wouldn't you? Come on, give me the give, Lord. Don't do the takeaway. Just give me the give. Well, if we've ever experienced this, you know well that God is, is an expert at addition by subtraction. He'll take stuff out of your life, and your life will explode into blessing. It's awesome. It's God's math. I can go back to Gideon and tell you how it doesn't make sense that God could use. God had an army. They, they amassed an army there of over 10,000, and God whittled it down to 300, and they went and won a tremendous victory. What I mean, that's God's math. God's math says that he can take, you can take 90% of your money and it'll go farther than 100% of your money if you pay your tithe. I can't explain that. All I know is that God's math doesn't have to make sense because it's God's math. And uh, this new math they're trying to do at school, I don't worry about that either. I still remember 2 plus 2 equals 4. And uh, you'll have a hard time getting me to not believe that and, and, and know that because, well, it's truth. So let's just go with truth. So let me move on here. I got, I, I'm, 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 I'm on track here, I promise you. This is where we're going. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. What's that? Now watch this. I, I'm, I may get hung right here and we may not get to chapter 12 anymore. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. So without Christ, what, we, what were we? We're in bondage. We were slaves to fear. We were slaves to ourselves. We were slaves to this world. So you didn't receive it again going back to that place, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now that Abba, how many of us probably in our life, most of us do, because you just, just the way you grow up, you called your father daddy or dad or some other term, term of endearment, something affectionate. You may have called him father, but it meant something to you, and it does. We called our dad daddy. Now I had cousins from South Carolina that they, they, used, that, they used the same word, but it had a different pronunciation. And we were always amused by it. Diddy. It was Diddy. And, and the first time we got together, we were young. I was probably five or six years old. And we got together at, our, at their grandparents and my great aunt and uncle's house. And we're playing, having a good time. And uh, Brian and Brian and Eric. And, and they're out there. And, 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 and Diddy, Diddy, which is, his name is uh, uh, Marshall. Marshall is, is out. They're getting ready to start making homemade ice cream. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm precious memories. I'm rolling up right here right now. And it wasn't one of these plugging in deals. It was a hand crank. That's the only way to make real ice cream. I'll just tell you right now. If you get good ice cream somewhere, they probably cranked it with their hand somewhere. Somebody touched it. Somebody had that hand on there. But, but we, get, we, would, we would take turns getting to sit on top of the ice cream machine to hold it down so they could crank faster. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. Diddy, it's my turn. Diddy, I want to go out. And, my, and I'm like, so what did he call him? Diddy. That's how people out in South Carolina say daddy. Oh, well, okay. Well, that makes sense now. We still laughed at them, kind of made fun of them a little bit, but, but uh, it's cousin stuff, whatever. But, but, but when you see that phrase, Abba, Father, I want you to think the way, think of that term of endearment. Abba, Father is not just saying, you know, some, I mean, this is, this is a heart, this is a heart cry. This is a, I love you, you're my father, I respect you, honor you because you're my father and who you are and what you are. I'm two weeks ahead on Father's Day, watch me go. And I said, then we cry out, Abba, Father. And I've heard several people that translate, that kind of take that and, and, and think about that in their mind. My daddy. My one, the one who loves me and cares for me and has, that, has a life for me and the one that, that blessed me in so many ways. So that Abba Father is a term of endearment. And it's a very special, heartfelt thing to say it that way. So then he says this. He says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, we don't like to talk about the suffering. We don't like to talk about that kind of thing because, well, that's, that turns people off, and they're not, we're not big fans of that. But can I tell you this morning, the suffering is not, we're not going to suffer the cross, we're, but we are going to do without things in this world that the world thinks we're crazy for. The world thinks it's okay to do all these other things and, and all the stuff that they call a good time and uh, that they call fun and they think that we're crazy for not doing it, but... Sometimes that sacrifice is not doing something that everybody else is doing. Sometimes that, that may be that we feel like we're being left out or we excluded ourselves from something for whatever reason. And I'll tell you this morning, we have in Christ that consolation that goes into our hearts that says it's going to be okay. You're not missing anything. You're not doing without anything. Some of you parents, your kids wanted to go, well, I'll use an easy one. Pools are open now. And... So-and-so's eight-year-old 
gets dropped off at the pool and left there all day, and they come pick them up at the end of the day. Eight-year-olds. Some eight-year-olds are better than other eight-year-olds. Some eight-year-olds, as soon as mom's gone, it's bedlam, it's chaos. And they're, called, they're the cause of every second of it. And some eight-year-olds mind their own business, have a good time, and they trust them, and they're, and they're, they're worthy of that trust. Amen? They, I mean, you have that. But there are other parents who look at, oh, my word, my eight-year-old? No, I, there's no way. That parent's crazy. She's not a good parent. They ought to call DCF on her. She's crazy. Hold on. Just because your eight-year-old is out of control doesn't mean someone else's eight-year-old is out of control. Now, for me, I would have a hard time with that. Brittany might have, CJ, not on his best day would I have turned him loose like that. I'm just telling you, you should, y'all heard me talking about our kids. Our kids are night and day. And, well, day and night, let's go that way. But anyway, you know, it, it's, it's, there are those things that we, that we have in our lives. And, and, but when you have that, now, here's where I was going with this. I, locked, I didn't lose track of myself completely. I'm back now. But let's say, let's see, um, Addie and Hudson aren't too far apart, are they? What, a year or two? Addie and Chloe, let's use those two. That's even better. Girls are horrible. <coughs> I'm talking about, hey, as far as, well, it doesn't matter. Let's just move on from that because I'll get myself in trouble. But, but, okay, Addie and Chloe are the same age. And let's just say I'm not, not this, I don't know this to be true, but let's just go there anyway. Brandy does let Chloe go to the pool. And Brandy's saying, no, I'm not. And, I, and I'm, God bless you. Thank you for that. But just, just work with me here. Justin, if, I'm glad, you know, Justin wouldn't work with me. Justin would throw me right under the bus, and that's where I'd live for the rest of my days. But, but then Addie gets dropped off at the pool. Well, what's Chloe going to do? Well, Addie gets to go. That's not fair. Why does her mom love her better than you love me? You know, one of those kind of deals. <laughs> there's these, I may have said this already recently, but there's this deal, there's different videos going around, and you got somebody talking on the phone. Mom, he said he doesn't love me anymore. That's not what I said. I said you can't have a new car. Well, it's the same thing. You know, and you have this little, you have this little pity party fit over whatever it is. You know, they don't love you because of that. And, and we, get to, we get to that, doing those kind of things. But, but watch this now. Watch this. I think this is really good. God blesses certain people in certain ways. And you're like, what about me? God, do you love me the same way you love that person? That person's blessed in some significant way that everybody can see. And here I am. I've been faithful. I've been true. I've been good. Wait a minute. Remember the prodigal son and the prodigal brother? Prodigal's, prodigal's brother. Why can't we just take and understand that God loves me regardless of anything else? And God has a plan for me regardless of anything else. And God desires to work in my life and have that place in my life. And just because I don't have what somebody else has or I have something somebody else doesn't, whatever doesn't affect God's love for me or for that person. And too much of the time we're, we're worried about those things. A joint heir with Jesus is a joint heir with Jesus. Just because I may live in the basement and somebody else may live in the penthouse doesn't change that I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I don't understand why some of these big-time preachers have their jets and have their big homes and have their big ministry and everybody just flocks to go see them. And half the time I can't get our regular folks to show up on a Sunday morning. Let alone a Sunday night or Wednesday night. And don't, don't get your toe smashed too bad right there. Just take, it, take, it, take your medicine. But I'm just telling you, what we have, if we're not careful, is a pity party. And why doesn't God love me? And why is God, why, if God loved me like he loved them, I'd have this, that, and something else. We have what we have in Christ, and we should be grateful and thankful and not, and not see it any other way. It's not easy. It's not fun sometimes. But I want to challenge you today that, the, that stop looking at what's going on with somebody else and let God use you, transform you, and be conformed, not be conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind for your life, for your experience, and your situation. I don't know how many times, especially over grades. Now, this, this is one I've talked about before, but it's not a secret. Brittany loved school. She loved school. She was great at school. She ended up with a 4.2 something in her graduate, out of a four point scale because of of, uh, of uh, AP classes, and she was just she was she was ready to go to college in about the tenth grade, I think, and she could I think she could, she had made it and done well because she put forth the work. CJ, if it had not been for playing baseball 
CJ would absolutely have quit school. Well, would have wanted to. Let's put it in We wouldn't have let him, but he would have wanted to. He did not put forth the effort. He did not try hard. He just, he got by, he skated by for the most part. And when he did apply himself, he was great and did wonderfully and had good grades in the stuff that he cared about. Problem was, he didn't care about most of it. And more than once, son, all you got to do is put forth the effort. All you got to do is try. Just get up, just get up in the morning and go to school, do your homework, because that was an issue too. No, we didn't want to do homework. Brittany was doing homework. She had her homework done before she left school and then maybe done some extra stuff at home. She just, that was her, she liked to study and liked to work and she just, just really good at it and enjoyed it. CJ hated it. He hated everything about it. And more than once, we're having a discussion. Son, you've got to keep your grades up. They won't let you play baseball if you don't keep your grades up. And that was, that was helpful. But you just, you just got to apply yourself. What, is, what are you doing? And my phrase that just is like nails on a chalkboard, I think you could have punched me in the stomach and I'd have smiled at you faster than these words. I'm not Brittany. Just saying those words out of my mouth right now, my blood pressure just went up. My ears, are my ears red? They probably should be. That's what happens when blood pressure goes up. My, blood, my ears get red. But I'm just telling you, it's like, I know you're not Brittany. You're not Brittany. You aren't Brittany. I don't expect you to be Brittany. I expect you to be CJ. And can I tell you this morning, God is not looking for me to be Billy Graham or Franklin Graham or Joel Osteen or anybody else out there. He wants me to be Jim Ferris and be Pastor Jim Ferris of Calvary Temple Assembly of God in Hiawatha, Kansas and be the best I can be for this church, for you, for this community and the world that I have the privilege of touching with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he wants me to be. That's what he has for me. I'm not going to sulk and pout because I don't have a humongous church in, in Texas that, that full of people this morning. I'm not going to fuss and pout. I'm not even fussing and pouting because some of our folks aren't here this morning. They work, they do stuff, they're sick, whatever. I understand that. And I love it when you're here, and, I, and it does bother me when you're not. And I wonder and when question, and I'll send you a text once in a while. Hadn't seen you in a little bit, missing you, hope you're okay. Check on folks, that's you know, what a good pastor does, they tell me. But, but I'm just telling you this morning, I'm not going to sit and sulk because I'm not the pastor of the biggest church in in Brown County or even in Hiawatha. I'm not going to fuss and pout because I don't have a television ministry. I'm on the internet, praise the Lord, that's kind of cool. But I'm, you know, anybody that wants to hear me can hear me if they want to hear me. And uh, hopefully they'll want to because what I have to say I believe is life-changing and, and revolutionary. But if we don't get our minds made up that we are the children of God, that we are individually joint heirs with Jesus, and that I am a child of God regardless of where I'm at, what I'm doing, or how I'm doing it, that I have a home in heaven that outshines the sun, I don't have to worry about any of those kind of things because it's not going to matter when I get to heaven whether I pastor to the biggest church, the smallest church, or the church up in the middle, or I was an evangelist or anything else. What's going to matter when I get to heaven? Did I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? I'll not be judged on another thing. Is Jesus Christ your Savior? Am I being transformed? Am I growing? Am I learning? Am I developing? Am I becoming more sanctified, more holy before God, day in and day out? Am I renewed in my mind and doing what the Word of God directs me I should do every day of my life? If I'm doing that, I'm on the right track. And I'm moving on. And I'm getting where I'm supposed to get to and having what I'm supposed to have. I want to take one more section out of Revelation, or Revelation, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through number 8, quickly this morning. And I want you to think about these words. I want you to read this because these are things that I believe in Romans chapter 12 by itself, with what we'll talk about next Sunday and what we're talking about already this morning, these are the things that will help me live that victorious life in Christ that I'm supposed to live, that I'm supposed to have and the things that I'm supposed to do. This, this is, here's, here's, here's another chunk of this that I think is powerful. So verse 3, <clears throat> excuse me, verse number 3, For I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion with our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in ministering. He who teaches in teaching. And then he says, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now in that section of scripture that I just read to you, what you have here is, 
to recognize and realize there is grace that is given to each and every one of us. And the grace that you and I have, that is ju it's just for you. Brandy's grace is Brandy's grace, Pete's is Pete's, Sharon's is Sharon's, and Claude's is Claude's. You have a grace that is just for you, an experience that is just yours alone. It, ha it, it, it is for you and it's given to you. And while you may share that and love somebody and tell them how much Jesus means to you, God then in turn has a grace for them and a, and a touch for them and help for them and a blessing for them, a life for them. And, you know, I am not, I am, you know, every single one of us, look at your finger this morning, and you see right there, if you can see it, you have a fingerprint. Your fingerprint is unlike another person on this planet. That is an amazing and incredible thing out of, out of the billions and billions of people that have lived on this earth. Not one single person, even a totally identical twin that you can't tell apart, still has different fingerprints. You're an individual. And because you're an individual, God has made you to be you and you alone. And God has given you life and, 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 and breath and, and a heartbeat and a mind and a function in, in this world. And because you have all of that, God cares about you and you alone in a way that only you will receive. So he says, you know what, here's, here's what you have. You have a different grace than I have, and I have a different grace than what you have, and each one of us have our, have our place we fit. So we have these differing things. There are those people that are outgoing and boisterous and can really get out there and have a good time. There are people who are just sheltered and closed off and, and rather, would rather not be bothered by anybody. All of, those, all of those attributes, all of those personalities, all of those circumstances within the body of Christ. Can I tell you this morning, if you're a person who raises your hands and shouts and sings and hoops and hollers, that you're no better than the person that folds their arms and sits there and waits for worship to be over? That doesn't sing because you don't like the sound of your voice? That, that, but in your heart and in your mind, you're still loving Jesus and worshiping Jesus like the person that wants to run around the room? It does not matter the posture of your body, sitting up, kneeling down, hang, you know, hands waving, raising, waving your hands, whatever you're doing. You can love Jesus just as much as the person who never utters a word because it's a matter of the heart. And you have a grace that is yours and yours alone. If you want to shout, shout. If you want to raise your hands, raise them. I encourage you to raise hands. The Bible talks about raising hands. And, I, and I, I'm good with that. But how many times have you heard me direct people during worship, let's all just raise our hands and love Jesus this morning. I don't do that. I'm not a big give your neighbor a high five and tell them Jesus loves them guy. I'm not a look at your neighbor and tell them blah, blah, blah. I don't do that. I'm not comfortable when people do that. I was in a meeting this week. And a little guy all the time, give your neighbor a high five and tell him whatever. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah whatever you said. And I'm like, I, I, it's just not, I don't, I don't like, I, I don't, not, not I don't like it, I just don't do it. And I'm not a big fan of doing it. Now, I got to know the person I was sitting next to, which is good because I needed to, but, but, you know, after a little while, by the time we got through Friday, it was like, you can. And slapping that hand and going on, you know, it's, 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 it's good. And, but, but, you know, we're all different. We all have our our. our the ways we think, the way we function, the way we operate. All of those things are different for every one of us. But I have a grace that's mine. Sharon has a grace that's hers. I am allowed. Carry on, cut up, having a good time kind of person. And most of the time my wife is sitting there like, oh my God. That's okay. That's fine. I don't criticize her for eye rolls, the things I say, and she don't criticize me for saying them. It's okay. We love each other. We care for each other. We had an instance one time. I'll say this in class, and we'll, we'll close for this morning. I don't, I've not experienced it since, but the Spirit was really moving. This our home church in Mountain Home, First Assembly of God, and I mean the Spirit was just, I mean it was, it was people just all over the room. There's people shouting and hooping and hollering speaking in tongues and crying and laughing and well it hit me and I've never had this sense I've had it one time but all of a sudden I just felt this I mean honestly like boiling up inside of me in a manner of speaking and it just I couldn't stop laughing this went on for probably 10 minutes and I'm just I mean I'm in the spirit and I'm just I mean it's just hysterical maniacal honestly looking back on it laughter just I mean and I can't even duplicate it I won't even try I mean, it's just laughing, and I'm just, I mean, tears are coming down my face, and I'm praising Jesus, and for the most part, I'm just laughing. That's all I could do was laugh. Now, years ago, they had laughing revivals up in the Northwest, 
and it was the whole thing, and the people just come together and start laughing. I'm like, no, that's, no. If that hits you that way, I guess that's fine. But it only happened once. But, but just after a few minutes of this, I mean, I'm standing there, and I'm just, I'm just, just being, I'm just, I can't hardly breathe. I'm laughing hysterically. And at one point, I look over at Sharon, and she's worshiping Jesus. She's having a good time, too. But I look over at her, and she's like, and the, and the, the look on her face, like, what is wrong with you? And I honestly, I'm, and I'm like, and I, and I get the message, and I'm like, I don't know, and I'm just laughing. And a, after a few minutes, it, it, it kind of wore down, and I kind of settled, you know, like you do sometimes. And I'm just like, oh, that was just amazing. And, so, and I'd, I'd like to live in that. I mean, that was just euphoric, and it was genuine laughter, and it was, I couldn't do anything else but laugh. But that was for me in that moment. And it may never happen again. Then again, it, one day I may be preaching for you, and if I start laughing like that, I promise you it's in the Spirit, because I'm not just going to take off in some kind of weird fit of laughter just for whatever. But that, you know, that's a grace that God gave me that morning. But God gave Sharon a grace to put up with me <laughs> for a long, for almost 34 years of marriage, let alone the, the courtship time. But I'm telling you something this morning. Don't, don't let people criticize you for who you are and what you are in Christ. You may not be like somebody else. And you may look at somebody else and say, well, I kind of wish I had that attribute. No, you are you. You're, and God may bless you, grant you that way. Ask him for it. First something you want in your life and you think, and you see something like that, ask him, yeah, God bless me that way. But God has, and we're not going to go there, and I'm really trying to be done, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when he talks about the gifts of the Spirit, he said, you know, you can't look at it and say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, or because I'm not a foot, or because I'm not a hand, or because I'm not a kneecap, I'm not, I mean, no, that, the, the kneecap's not there, that'd be in the deep, deep Greek that uh, somebody probably made up like me. But, but you, have, you have in that, you have where you fit. You have, you are part of the body of Christ. And because you're part of the body of Christ, you need to be transformed every day by the renewing of your mind in the word, in prayer, in worship, and giving God every part of your life. Your job, your work, your family, everything that you have. To be transformed is to be remade, if you will, every day. To be reformed, refreshed, renewed, all whatever, re-revived, everything you want to put in there with that re that re prefix in it because if we will have that mindset we will become daily more of what god would have us be do more of what god would have us do and with time drawing short like it is and i don't mean for this message i mean because of the way the world is is going we are in those second second timothy chapter three perilous times and we're in a world that surrounds us that is full of all kinds of frustrating upsetting aggravating things but god who is rich in mercy with the great love that he has loved us, he has blessed us. And because he has blessed us, we have a voice, we have a testimony, we have an opportunity to touch the world around us. You know what Pentecost really accomplished more than anything else? A harvest of souls. 3,000 people were saved that day because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And can I submit to you this morning, and I'll be very careful how I say this, because I am Pentecostal, and I do believe in tongues and all those kind of things. It wasn't the tongues. It wasn't the, the, this or that or the wind or the fire. It was the message of the gospel that came through a man named Peter that people said, what must we do? That was the grace given to Peter that day in line with Romans chapter 12 that caused him to speak up and speak out and say, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Father, I love you this morning and I'm grateful for your word and for the promises we find in it. Lord, you have for each and every one of us a plan. And in that plan, there is grace and freedom and help and hope and so much that you have in store for your people. And God, today I pray that we would each one individually find that place of grace that you have just for us. And that in that grace we would find the gifts, the strength, the encouragement you have for each individual that in turn makes a difference in their home, their family, their job, in this church. But Lord, help us find the place in our lives where every day we are seeking to be transformed. We are looking for that renewing, refreshing, reviving, experience with you every day lord god in the process your name is glorified and lifted up 
our lives are enriched and, and, and enabled to great things in you. And Lord, that the result of all of it is that some soul may be saved because of what you do in us and through us and for us. Use us, God, to make a difference in this community, in this world. Touch lives and hearts through us as we seek your face to be renewed every day. I give you the praise and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed, please, just for a moment. If you're sitting in this room today and you'd say, I don't know Jesus, I look around and I'm pretty sure that's probably not the case, but I'm going to give you an opportunity anyway and also will, as I've been doing, lead a prayer for those watching online that I don't have an ability to see whether or not they've responded. I don't have that, that handy and easily to do, so I don't try to. But today you'd say, I need Jesus in my heart. I need to rededicate, recommit my life to him maybe. Or if you're watching with us online, if that's you or you've never known Jesus, but what you've heard this morning causes you to want to experience that grace, to experience that life in Christ that we're talking about, to be transformed, to be renewed in your mind, your body, and your life. If that's you today, I just want to give this opportunity to ask Jesus into your heart. So this morning, I want to ask you, to pray this prayer with me if you need to. In the room, you're welcome to join me. And, and those that are watching online, I ask you if you need Jesus in your heart today to pray this, this prayer, inviting Jesus into your life this morning. Dear Jesus, I know today through your word that you love me. Help me to experience that love. Forgive me of my sins and where I failed. Renew me in my mind, in my body, in my spirit. Help me to transform from lost to found, from old to new, from death to life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And I thank you in advance for helping me to live for you each and every day until I stand before you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer with us this morning, we'd love to hear from you. There's an address on your screen in the room. If you pray that prayer, please let me know. I just That would just honor me and bless me so much to know that. And today as we, as we dismiss in just a moment, I just want you to think about that transformation that you've experienced and the transformation you need to continue to experience every day and the life that God has for you to live every day. Because your life may be the one that makes the difference for somebody to know Jesus because of what he's done in you that they see. And that's that grace that we were just talking about from those verses from verse 3 through verse number 8. Stand with me this morning if you would. And as I've been leaving with you here, encouraged by Loretta Lee, which we hope this blesses her as well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, today we believe for your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us wherever we go, whatever we do. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that helps us and, and meets us each and every day and ask you to use us, bless us, and empower us by your Spirit and by your power. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. God bless you. We hope we'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Join us online if you can't make it in person.